Welcome to Chuck Builds. This is a part of my new series, setting up my smart home in my new home after I've moved from Texas to Florida. One of my favorite things about using smart bulbs is adaptive brightness, where the lights get brighter in the middle of the day, they get a little dimmer at night, they change color temperatures, that they're much warmer in the evening and much cooler in the middle of the day. I love the effect of this. I love that I don't have to think about it. And I love that when I walk into the room, it is usually after you dial it in the perfect brightness and color for you and it's just a really neat effect and it's not too hard to set up now i have already added all of my lights to home assistant using zigbee to mqtt i have spent most of today setting these up we've got quite a lot in here and this is all over the house but what we need to do now is actually install adaptive lighting. And the way that we do this is through an application called HEX or the Home Assistant Community Store. I believe that's what the acronym is for. And we're gonna have to add an integration through an add-on. So we're gonna go to settings, add-ons, and then we are going to go to the add-on store. And before we can actually find it in the add-on store, we need to go to their documentation where they have a link to add the repository to our home assistant. We're gonna add it, yes. Let's add it now and then let's install git hacks. Once that's happened, we'll hit start, check out the log. It's doing everything for us. This is wonderful how much this has come along. I do have a video that I made on my YouTube channel from a few years ago about how to do this. It was much more manual than this. So I'm very impressed at how quickly this is going. It said to monitor our logs to find out what to do next. It looks like it created the directory and unpacked. It had the correct version. Installation is complete. And then remember to restart Home Assistant before you configure it. And then it stopped everything. So we're going to go to our settings, restart Home Assistant, and then restart. So Home Assistant has restarted. We're going to go to our integrations and we're going to add an integration. We have hex here, and we need to confirm a few things before we install it, that we know how to check our logs, that we know that there are no add-ons inside the Home Assistant Community Store. Everything inside of Hacks, including Hacks itself, is custom and untested by Home Assistant. So if you download something on Hacks and you don't like it, or it crashes, or it just doesn't work well, you understand it's not Home Assistant. You're using somebody's code. It's their fault, not Home Assistant's. Uh, I know that if I get issues with Home Assistant, I should disable my custom components. That's a great place to troubleshoot. Click Submit, and then we need to confirm through GitHub with this code. Do this off screen so you don't see my info. All right, so Hacks is installed. We'll hit skip and finish. We can see our integration is here. And this is the Home Assistant Community Store. So you can download all kinds of uh, integrations that aren't officially supported by Home Assistant. But right now we're here for adaptive lighting. And I love that it's this far to the top. We're gonna come grab this, hit download and download. So once we've downloaded that, if we go to our settings, we can see that a restart is required. And that's for this to work. So we'll hit submit for it to restart now. And now that Home Assistant is starting, if we go to our integrations, we should be able to add an adaptive lighting integration. And you can create multiple of these. So if you have a set of lights that you want to be very bright during the day and evening, and you have a set of lights that you want to be a little dimmer, you can break those up. Um, I'm going to call this light. I'm going to call this general adaptive lighting as my baseline. And we're going to hit submit here. Area does not matter because it's going to be the whole house. And we're going to have four controls here. Uh, we have the brightness. We have the color temperature. We have the sleep mode. So if you have a sleep mode, it can go way dark uh, in the middle of the night. And then you have adaptive lighting in general that you can turn on or off. So if you don't want anything to be working, you can turn that off. If you want just the brightness or just the color, you can... Uh, get that with these toggles and sleep mode. If you turn this on through an automation or something, it's going to crash all the lights down to super, super dim and super, super red, which is great if that's what you want. And to set up this adaptive lighting, we're going to click on this adaptive lighting right here. And then we're going to click on this gear right here. And so this is the number of lights that we want to choose. While editing, I made a mistake, so I'm fixing it in post. Uh, what we're going to do in adaptive lighting is come up to this light section, and you're going to add all of your lights individually. And you're going to leave out the groups 
Um, the groups are the more effective way of using lights over Zigbee to MQTT, but unfortunately in adaptive lighting, if you use groups, there's a really high chance it's going to end up leaving all of your lights on like randomly. I really did not understand why this was happening. Check some forum posts and apparently using groups does cause adaptive lighting to like break a little bit and it just turns on all of your lights randomly for adaptive lighting you want to use the light bulbs individually and it's going to intercept those calls but elsewhere inside of home assistant such as your automations to call on these lights you're going to want to use the light group the way i think about this is when using an automation the light group is what i want to call to turn on these lights uh bar lights will be bar seats bar sink and so when i use my automation turn on bar lights these two lights get the message but what adaptive lighting is doing is waiting to see a message with bar seats and then intercepts that message and inserts itself saying what brightness and color to use uh, technically this is less optimal less efficient for your zigbee network but if you use the groups, I'm telling you right now, it was leaving all of my lights on. I would turn on, I'd walk into one room and the entire house would turn on. Hopefully there's a fix for this in the near future and we can start using these groups to make our Zigbee to MQTT calls more efficient. But for now, just do the individual lights and then let's dive into the rest of the options. Uh, frequency to adapt in seconds, 90 seconds. I think that's okay. 45 seconds to transition, that should be all right. Uh, duration of the first from off to on we want a little glow a little slight turn on not just a bright on but just a slight minimum brightness one is super low and some lights simply can't go that low so we're going to do it around 20 i still want to be able to see i just don't want it like much brighter uh maximum brightness 100 middle of the day full sun i want these lights bright minimum color 2000 uh that might be a little low we might get a little too cave like with that i'm gonna bump it up to just 2500 see where we're at you can dial this in over time and similarly max color temp 5500 that might be a little blue for me i don't love that cold of a temperature so we're gonna drop it down to 5000 and we can adjust this in the future no problem sleep brightness when sleep mode is enabled is going to be very very low and again, one is very dark. Uh, let's try five. It is in the middle of the night. This is like you're getting up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. Uh, you don't want it very bright at all. Color temp of 1000 or just as low as it will go. So it will be just absolute cave painting, which is fine. And then transition until sleep. So if you really dialed in your sleep settings here, uh, it can transition down until it meets the sleep settings. I don't like that because then it's just always getting darker in the night until it hits a certain time um, and that you'll set that down here. I like to call it with an automation when I'm in bed and I hit a button and my phone's on the charger. That's when I want it to be super dark. I don't want it to happen or surprise me as I'm out and about around the house. Uh, sunset times, we're going to leave none. We're going to have all the automated defaults here. I recently moved. I don't know what the sun situation is like in the morning over here. And I'm just going to adjust it as I notice it needing adjusting. If in the fall, it seems very blue and very bright when it's darker outside at dusk, maybe I'll come in and adjust that sunset time down. Um, if I wake up and it's still too, it's still too dim in the house and I can't, I'm stubbing my toe and I can't get around, then maybe I'll adjust that sunrise time um, earlier as well. But right now, I'm going to leave it just because I'm not positive which direction I want it to go. Takeover control uh, disables adaptive lighting if another source calls this, uh, but it does check the interval much more often. But this is really nice if you're outside of your usual routine. If for some reason you're having friends over after the bar and your lights are usually very dim and you walk in, everybody going, whoa, it's so dark in here. You can just hit your regular old button on your dashboard to turn your lights on and just drag it brighter one time on your phone and it'll stay brighter. If you had this off, I believe after 90 seconds, it's going to try and dim it back down as well. Detect non home assistant changes. That's like if you're using Philips Hue and home assistant using Philips Hue. 
I'm going to ignore that. Only once adapt lights when they're first turned on or keep adapting them. I like to see them change throughout the day. If you have this set, you walk into your living room, the lights adjust at that time period. You sit there for four hours. They're still at that same time period of four hours ago. They're not getting darker as the evening goes on and you kind of lose that effect. And the biggest downside to this, in my opinion, is if you can see other rooms or other lights, that one will be cooler and one will be warmer. And you can see both of those in an easy comparison at the same time. Um, I like to make sure all of my lights are the same. I really don't like seeing different bulb colors around the house. Skip redundant commands. If the light is already at the right light brightness or color, don't send it again. Um, you want to have this on probably, especially with a lot of lights. You just want to reduce the amount of network traffic saying all this. But if you're having a situation where your lights get out of sync with Home Assistant pretty often, again, if you're using the Philips Hue Hub and Home Assistant, um, if you're adjusting it in the Hub or the Hue app and in Home Assistant, you could get out of sync and this could be a problem for you. I don't think I've ever run into that. And then I'm just going to I'm going to hit submit. I feel pretty good about this right now. And right away, I saw the light in my office dimmed down some. I've got a spotlight on me, so not that one. But if we come over here and check out some of our lights, we can see they're at 38% and quite warm on the color scale. So right away, it's working. Um, next up for Chuck Build's new home is we're going to be doing some automations for motion detection to turn on these lights. If you've been following along, or maybe this is the first video you've jumped in on, that this video series is me moving to a new home from Texas to Florida, and I'm setting up my smart home in a little bit of a rapid fire. I have all of these videos in depth on my channel. If you wanna learn more about adaptive brightness, I do have a very in-depth video about that on my channel for you to go check out. Right now, I'm just setting up my smart home. If you wanna follow along or learn something along the way, I hope you do so and let me know how it works for you. If you wanna follow this journey, my next Next video is going to be about smart home automations for presence detection to turn on these lights. And so far, what we've done is we've installed Home Assistant on Proxmox as a VM. We've set up Zigbee to MQTT. We've set up Node Red for automations. And now we've set up adaptive brightness to automatically control the brightness and color of our lights. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please let me know and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.